Hello, I'm Amy Ferguson with Canines of Leash. Here I am today with Lisa and 3D Horsemanship. She is going to talk to us about the correlation between leash tension. I have noticed that when kids come to camp over the summer, the ones that work with horses seem to work with dogs very well. And I think they understand that the tension on the leash has to be just right to get the communication line successful. And one of the things I see dog owners do is take a six foot lead, wrap it around their hand, and then you have 12 inches left. They should just buy a one foot lead, right? <laughs> well, what they want is control out of that dog, but I think they're getting the opposite. They're getting dogs that are struggling, pulling back, opposite, you know, what we want. And we really need to teach how to communicate with the leash and build trust with the animal and the connection. And if you would tell us a little bit how that relates to your world with <laughs> the horses. So I think what I would say is the problem, although I see it too, I see people with chains over their horse's nose, I see heavy duty halters. What we strive to teach people here at 3D Horsemanship is the appropriate use of your lead line and your halter. With a dog, you can get away with it. You know, the dog, you know, 65 pounds, 100 pounds, yeah. you can wrap that lead line around your hand and, and sort of manhandle it. Right. What we teach people is that even a horse that weighs 15, 100 pounds, you've got to have lightness in your lead line. You don't want to be dragging the horse around. We don't. If you're doing this, he can drag me much more easily than I can drag him anywhere. So the communication is actually a body language. And this is just a line of communication. So what we like the horse to learn about is that I can lead him anywhere very lightly with the lead line. We teach them this so that they're not pulling by teaching them about pressure. And once you've taught a horse or a dog about pressure, they tend to respond to it and they're much happier and you're not pulling on them and you're not dragging your horse around and he's not dragging you somewhere. So we start with a rope halter. It does have knots on it that are in sort of critical placement areas, fairly sensitive on the horse's face. And we sort of teach them to release from pressure. I'm not gonna grab the halter, but I am gonna touch it and I'm gonna move his face. When he does it, I let go. I'm not pulling him. I didn't take a hold of the halter and shove him and hold him there. The moment he gave in, I relaxed. The horse then begins to understand that even when I step into his face and just touch the halter, he'll move away from me. Give it a try. Um, <laughs> just walk into the space? And Go ahead, walk into his face. Just because the horse didn't react to her doesn't mean that she goes to a level five. She's gonna step into his face. He's not paying attention to her. Yep, so take a step to the left. Redirect his attention onto you so that you are more interesting than whatever else he was just looking at. Now you're gonna take a step into his face and you're gonna shake the lead line. You're not gonna pull on it this time, but you're gonna shake it and step in. There you go. And now you're gonna take a step back and release it. That's it. Magic! It's magic! Oh, nice! nice. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time today. I think it's very important for people to understand that the communication is through the lead. Yep. And the less pressure that is on the lead, the better you're going to build trust. The communication is going to flourish for you and your animal. Yep. And they're going to want to be with you. They're going to want to have those moments where they want to be with you because you're not trying to control everything so desperately. Yep. This is a much time. happier so, space. Thank you. Yes. Great. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Say thanks, Conlon. <laughs> Join us again at Canines Unleashed for a new video soon.